Hello learners of class 11, welcome to the wonderful world of English language classroom. Today learners, we are doing the first lesson in our textbook, our class 11 textbook, Hornbill, the Kuswan Singh's uh, autobiographical text, The Portrait of a Lady. Kuswan Singh describes his grandmother very lucidly and her actions her life and his bond with uh, her and the, the time, everything is uh, he describes in a very, very exemplary manner. Let us move on to uh, understand the text first and before we move on to read the text and understand, let me introduce Yukta, a student like you and you learners Yukta and me will do this lesson today. Hello everyone. Let us learn the objectives of the lesson. Let us let us set some objectives. Here are the objectives of this lesson, today's lesson, uh, which Yukta will read out to you. Okay. So, learners, the objectives of the lesson are at the end of this interaction, learners will be able to read the text, the portrait of a lady with understanding and interpret ideas then deduce the meaning of words and phrases and use them for purposes. Fine. Learners, we have got two objectives for you. One is we read and understand the text, interpret the ideas, events and the language used and also we pay special attention. We pay special attention to some of the words and phrases which Kuswan Singh uses to make it effective, interesting and create images in our minds. All right, okay. learners, now we will listen to the next stage of their relationship. Kuswan Singh and his grandmother, they moved to the city because the parents had settled. So, yes. now things change. Come on, let us see, uh, uh, listen to it. When my parents were comfortably settled in the city, they sent for us. That was a turning point in our friendship. Although we shared the same room, my grandmother no longer came to school with me. I used to go to an English school in a motor bus. There were no dogs in the streets and she took to feeding sparrows in the courtyard of our city house. As the years rolled by, we saw less of each other. For some time, she continued to wake me up and get me ready for school. When I came back, she would ask me what the teacher had taught me. Page number 5 I would tell her English words and little things of Western science and learning. The law of gravity, Archimedes principle, the world being round, etc. This made her unhappy. She could not help me with my lessons. She did not believe in the things they taught at the English school and was distressed that there was no teaching about God and the scriptures. One day, I announced that we were being given music lessons. She was very disturbed. To her music had lewd associations. It was the monopoly of harlots and beggars and not meant for gentlefolk. She said nothing but her silence meant disapproval. She rarely talked to me after that. When I went up to university, I was given a room of my own. The common link of friendship was snapped. My grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation. She rarely left her spinning wheel to talk to anyone. From sunrise to sunset, she sat by her wheel spinning and reciting prayers. Only in the afternoon, she relaxed for a while to feed the sparrows. While she sat in the veranda, breaking the bread into little bits, hundreds of little birds collected round her, creating a veritable bedlam of chirpings. Some came and perched on her legs, others on her shoulders. Some even sat on her head. She smiled but never shooed them away. It used to be the happiest half hour of the day for her. When I decided to go abroad for further studies, I was sure my grandmother would be upset. I would be away for five years. And at her age, one could never tell, but my grandmother could. Come on, Yukta, arrange the strips, the life of Kushwan Singh and the grandmother in the city and how okay. their relationship, friendship, mood or 
got snapped. Okay. So, when they moved to the city, uh, the turning point in their friendship happened when they had moved to the city. Yeah. This one. Okay. Though they shared the same room, he was moving away from her. She did not accompany him to school. Okay, now she did not accompany him like before. She continued to wake him up and would ask him what was taught in school when he came back from school. Okay. She would ask him what was taught, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. She, so she used to ask him, then she could not understand the lessons taught modern science, mathematics. She was disturbed to learn that music was taught in school. To her, music had lewd associations. It was a monopoly of harlots and beggars. So she, thought, she thought that learning music was the, uh, it has lewd uh, as association, mean, mean. The, yeah. it, it was cheap thing, not, not a good thing to do. In those days, it was a belief. Uh, <laughs> Now, the narrator was given a separate room when he went to the university. The common link of the friendship was snapped. Fine. He's, he's saying with the regret that the relationship between him and the grandmother got snapped. Means when he oh. moved to the mm -hmm. university. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, she talked to him very rarely after that. Fine. Okay. Now, when Kushwan Singh decided to go abroad for further study, he thought his grandmother would be upset. Fine, but okay. she got, did she get upset? No, actually. His grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation and she la rarely left her spinning wheel to talk to anyone. Maybe she found a hobby, I think. Mm. <laughs> so, you were saying about Kushwan Singh's uh, um, was, was uh, decided to go abroad and then you say something else. What is the coherence there? Find out, find out. Something else, I feel something, something else would come. Uh, he talked to him rarely, then most probably the, the, the other one. She, 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 she secluded herself. So, what would come? Okay. Okay. So, when Kushman Singh decided to go abroad for further studies, he thought his grandmother would be upset. But she did not show any emotions and went to see him off at the railway station. That, that, that was the courage of the lady. Yeah. yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Then his grandmother accepted her execution with resignation mm. and she rarely left her spinning wheel to talk to anyone. Then she relaxed in the afternoon and she would feed the sparrows with bread. Hundreds of them would come to her. Some would sit on her legs, some on her head and so on. Okay. Then, oh, when he returned from abroad after five years, she came to receive him at the station and she looked the same, not a day older. Fine. That, that was the great thing about the grandmother. Mm -hmm. Fine, fine. Then she behaved as usual, reciting holy prayers and spinning the wheel and feeding the sparrows. She did not change her routine. In the evening, a change came over her. She did not pray. She collected the women of the neighborhood, got an old drum and started to sing. For several hours, she thumped the sagging skins of the dilapidated drum and sang of the homecoming of warriors. We had to persuade her to stop to avoid overstraining. That was the first time since I had known her that she did not pray. The next morning she was taken ill. It was a mild fever and the doctor told us that it would go. But my grandmother thought differently. She told us that her end was near. She said that since only a few hours before the close of the last chapter of her life, she had omitted to pray. She was not going to waste any more time talking to us. We protested, but she ignored our protests. She lay peacefully in bed, praying and telling her beads. Even before we could suspect, her lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers. A peaceful pallor spread on her face, and we knew that she was dead. We lifted her off the bed, and, as is customary, laid her on the ground and covered her with a red shroud. After a few hours of mourning, 
we left her alone to make arrangements for her funeral. In the evening, we went to her room with a crude stretcher to take her to be cremated. The sun was setting and had lit her room and veranda with a blaze of golden light. We stopped halfway in the courtyard. All over the veranda and in her room, right up to where she lay dead and stiff wrapped in the red shroud, thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor. There was no chirping. We felt sorry for the birds and my mother fetched some bread for them. She broke it into little crumbs, the way my grandmother used to, and threw it to them. The sparrows took no notice of the bread. When we carried my grandmother's corpse off, they flew away quietly. Next morning, the sweeper swept the breadcrumbs into the dustbin. So learners, Yukta, we have done the two or three stages uh, which uh, Kuswan Singh this, uh, brings, presents to us. Yes. Uh, Yukta, Kuswan Singh presents three stages which we have seen. First is the description of the grandmother, yes. then their life in the village, then there's life in the city. city. Now, Kuswan Singh comes back, then she did not show any difference for him and she did not show any extra emotions. She yeah. was very fine as a, like a modern uh, yes. uh, uh, she woman. She was continuing with her practices, uh, practices, her daily practice. But now, grandmother passes away. So, yes. how he describes it? Come on, learners, Yukta has the strips again. She is going to put them and read them out to us so that we understand how the death of the grandmother is depicted by Kuswan Singh. Okay, so we will arrange them. The evening of the day he arrived, change came over her. She did not pray. That was the first time she never prayed, okay? Yes. Uh, she collected the women of the neighborhood, started beating an old drum and started to sing. Fine. That was strange uh, of her behavior. She has never done yes. such thing, singing and beating the drum. Now, she beat the old drum for hours and sang the song of the homecoming warriors. Fine. That was the old uh, Indian style, no? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Then also the European style that they praise the homecoming, having won the war, you come back. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, now people had to persuade her to stop her and that was the first time she did not pray. That was the first time she never prayed. Fine. Yes. So, next morning she was taken ill. It was only mild fever. She told them that her end was near. Yeah, she was able to sense that she was dying. Now, when her body was kept on the floor of the house to be taken to the burial ground, thousands of sparrows sat scattered on the floor without making any chirping noise. So, she passed away. Then Kuswan Singh describes how the sparrows behaved, yeah. yeah. Kushwan Singh's mother brought bread pieces for the sparrows and scattered them, but the sparrows did not eat at all. Fine. Mm. So, the sparrows understood, uh, realized that the grandmother had passed away. Yes. Fine. When the grandmother's body was taken to the burial ground, the sparrows flew away. That's right. So, they never ate the bread pieces. This mm. is how her association with, see, first with the human, that is Kuswan Singh, hmm. then nature, temple, school, then at last with the sparrows, sparrows and dogs in the village. So, this is how a, a typical Indian human life, yes. life is living. So, from, from the beginning, from materialistic worldly pleasures to moving and selfless, then he never, never needed anything beyond the minimum things. Yeah. Then the compassion, not only to humans, also to the animals, animals. that is same. So, this is how learners Kuswan Singh presents the lucid writing and describing uh, the grandmother and her life. See, today is the time that uh, um, uh, the elderly people are not even respected properly. Mm -hmm. Then we have, we have seen that old age homes yes. in many places, the, 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 the children, uh, sons and daughters put their uh, fathers and their, mothers yes. into old age home. So, this Kuswan Singh also tells us implicitly, indirectly the value of uh, we should really revere, take care of our elders. Mm -hmm. Learners, this is how uh, he presents, uh, I hope and I believe and I want you to read and reread and do the activities. Now, we are moving to do some 
uh, two different tasks in order to understand the text seriously and interpret it. Come on, Nikta, okay. ready? Yes, I am ready. So, learners and Yukta, we have done lot of activities rearranging the sentences into describe the grandmother and the is life, uh, their life in the village and the town, city, then passing away of the grandmother. Come yes. on, learners, uh, let me test you uh, the understanding of the text which you have read or uh, will be reading. Uh, so, based on your reading of the text, so let us do some tasks. The first one is I am going to read out some of the statements. Uh, learners and Yukta, you will have to say whether the statements are true or false. Okay. Fine, come on. So, there are some 10 15 statements. So, you will have to say either true or false. Okay. okay. Statement 1 Kuswan Singh's grandmother was 100 years old. I think that is false because uh, Kuswan Singh never mentioned how old she was. He usually told that she was very old, but never that 100. Fine, fine. Okay, it is false. Oh. She had wrinkles running from everywhere to everywhere. Yes, this is true. <laughs> so, Kuswan Singh says it. Yes. Fine. Okay. Kuswan Singh could not imagine his grandmother as a young lady. Yes, this is also true. Okay. He never thought of her as a young lady. Oh, fine. Yeah. The grandmother went with him to the school in the village. Yes, false. in the village. Yes. True or false? True. Fine. She would feed the dogs while returning home from the school. Yes, uh, she would be in the temple and then when she returned, she used to feed them. True or false? True. Uh, true, fine. She would recite the prayer while getting him ready to school so that he can learn it by heart. Yes, this is true, but he never learned it by heart. He never learned it, fine. Yes. Grandmother accompanied him to school even after they moved to the city. No, this is false. Uh, she used to do this only in village. Fine. Their friendship was snapped when he got a separate room. Yes. True? They, yes, true. true. Mm. Their friendship was snapped when Kushwan Singh went to the university. No, this is false because the friendship snapped before mm. and then after that it got weaker, mm. but not at the time of university. Okay. The, I doubt it. He got a separate room when he went to the university, he says. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's so, kind of interrelated. Uh, fine. Yes. So, yeah. yes, uh, we, I would say it is also true. Fine. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Let, let learners decide. Okay. The grandmother was unhappy when he left for hi higher education to a foreign country. Uh, this is false because she was not unhappy. She did not show her emotion. She was normal. She was normal. Fine. She accepted it as normal. Yes. Fine. She, she had very old, she, she grew very old, grown old and feeble when he returned from abroad after his studies. No, this is false. She actually according to the Kush, uh, writer, the author, he said that uh, she did not old at all. She did not get she, old she at all. She did not even look a day older. Yes, fine, a fine. day older. Okay. The only two companions of the grandmother were the spinning wheel and the sparrows. Yes, that is true. It was also her hobby. She, yes, this she is fed true. Them, yeah? Yeah, she, she fed, fed them. them. She never spoke to anyone else. Yes. The grandmother accepted her seclusion with the resignation. Yes, this is true. She kept herself uh, a secluded alone. Yes. The grandmother started beating the old drum on the day before her passing away. Yes, this is true. When uh, the author came back from foreign country, then she did this gesture. Okay. Grandmother told Kuswan Singh and others that her end was near. Yes, she already told everyone that even if that is a mild fever, she was not feeling well and she said that her end is near. Fine. Okay. The last one, the day the grandmother passed away, the sparrows were sad and did not eat anything. Yes, this is true. Fine. It is yes. true because they, even the Kuswan Singh mother uh, gave them some spread yes. uh, bread and all, it never ate. Fine. So, 14th statement, Yukta, grandmother started beating the old drum on the day before her passing away. Yes, this is true. She beat the drum when his, when her grandson arrived. So, she beat the drum. Yes. Okay. She... Grandmother told Kuswan Singh and others that her end was near. Yes, this is true. Fine. The day grandmother passed away, 
the sparrows were sad and did not eat anything at all. Yes, this is true because they were mourning for the grandmother. Fine, it appeared, and the uh, the the and the mother Kuswan Singh's mother gave them some Breads. bread, but it, they never ate. Yes. Come on, learners. These were the true or false statements. There were about sixteen. You must have got the general idea, understanding of the story based on your answers and Ikta's answers, and you read again and do it. Learners, the next task is multiple choice questions. Yukta, I will read out the question with four options. You will have to choose the best suitable option for that. Okay. Come on. The first one, whose portrait is described in the story? The portrait of the of a lady. Mm. Whose portrait is described in the story? The portrait of a lady. Mm. One, Kuswan Singh's grandmother. Two, Kuswan Singh's mother. An old lady from the neighborhood. This is Kushwan Singh's grandmother. Okay, easy one. Kushwan Singh's grandmother. Yes. Second one, she had been old and wrinkled for twenty years that I had known her. What does this mean when he when he says this? The options are: she did not grow well, grow at all. She did not grow at all. One, she looked the same for a long time. She was young and has grown old now. Uh, this means that she looked the same for a long time. Fine. Okay. She has been wrinkled for twenty years. Yes. Okay. Third one. As far my grandmother, as third one, as far my grandmother being young and pretty, the thought was almost revolting. Why was the thought revolting for Kuswan Singh? The option is: Kuswan Singh had seen her only as an old lady. Kuswan Singh could not believe that she was young once. He thought that this lady has never been beautiful. He believed that she was once young and pretty. So Kuswan Singh could not believe that she was once young. Right, right. Okay, learners, you also do it and uh, tell us which one is right. We may go wrong. Yukta yeah. may go wrong. Okay, four. She was like the winter landscape in the mountains, an expanse of pure white serenity, breathing peace and contentment. What does an expanse of purity with what does an expanse of pure white serenity mean here? One, complete calm and peace. Two, whiteness symbolizes. Two, whiteness symbolizes. Peace and calm. Three. Grandmother symbolizes peace and fulfillment. I think this is whiteness symbolizes peace and calm. Fine. All right. Fifth one. That was a turning point in our friendship. What was the turning point? Okay. One. Moving of the narrator and the grandmother to the city. The change in the friendship of the narrator and the grandmother. The grandmother stopped talking to him. narrator's father decided to send him to england okay so this is i think everyone knows hmm. moving of the narrator and the grandmother to the city so that was the turning point In the, the friendship. friendship got almost disturbed yes sixth one my grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation what does seclusion with resignation mean here the option is sure The grandmother was very emotional in accepting her loneliness. The grandmother was bold enough to resign into being alone. The grandmother accepted her loneliness without being sentimental about it. So this is the grandmother accepted her loneliness without being sentimental about it. Fine, fine. Seventh one: hundreds of little birds collected around her, creating a veritable bedlam of chirpings. What is veritable bedlam? Here means, okay. One, the melody created by the sparrows and their chirpings, the noise, confusion, chaos created by the sparrows, the noise created by grandmother's singing of the prayer. This is the noise, confusion, and chaos created by the sparrows. Okay, well, learners and Yukta, let me also tell you uh, the word bedlam. We call it bedlam beggars. Bedlam mm -hmm. is a place where uh, in those days. Uh, Uh, the the 
mentally unstable people are taken and housed. Okay. So, the sometimes when, when some chaotic situation, lots of noises, commotion take place, we call it, uh, why, is the, why is this bedlam? So, we call it. So, so let us also uh, uh, learn that new usage bedlam. Eighth question, what was the grandmother's reaction when the narrator decided to go abroad? Okay. Uh, the options are, one, she could not accept it and became very emotional. She was normal and went to see him off at the railway station. She was very happy that the grandson was going abroad for studies. Okay, so this is she was normal and went to see him off. Be okay, fine. Because that's fine. a major change oh, in her. So she never showed any emotions of that that grandson is move, going away then. Yes. The ninth one, what surprised Kuswan Singh when he returned fr from studies abroad? The options are. She looked the same, not a day older. She grew much older and feeble. She did not speak to him at all. Uh, what surprised him is that she looked the same, not a day older. Fine. This, this was fine. Yes. Then, the last one, what do you think of Kuswan Singh's grandmother? The options are, she is a religious person with a modern outlook. She is a superstitious person and hated science, she is an ordinary Indian woman. I think she is an ordinary Indian woman. Fine. Okay. You did not want to say the first one, she is a religious person, but with a scientific outlook, modern outlook. I, I would go for it. Huh? Yeah, this could, this could Fine. be one. Okay. Uh, we leave it to you learners and okay. Yukta, you are right. So, I will go for both. Not necessarily there is one said answer, more than one options could be right in multiple choice. Okay. Uh, thank you, Avita. Thank you, learners, for having done all the activities. Thank you so of, much. Of the reading of the text, understanding of the text. I am going to give you no, no homework, no follow-up work, but I am going to ask you to read two or three short stories of Kushwan Singh. Okay. Uh, one of them is uh, Mark of Vishnu. That is about Indian, typical Indian situation and superstition, children, how, how they do. The other one is he wrote many novels. One uh, one of them is Delhi. He described the whole Delhi and the people there. The story sets in there. Okay. Other one is I shall not listen to the Nightingale something. I, I forgot the title. Mm. Okay. Uh, so any one of them and lots of his jokes, many many small <laughs> small write-ups, political commentaries. Uh, learners, just take a look at and uh, read them uh, so that you know how you you can you learn how to write on your own how a small trivial thing can be a uh, theme of the story, things like that. Learners, thank you very much. Thank you, Yukta. Thank we you will so meet much. you in part 2 of this lesson uh, uh, later. Uh, till then, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity and take care everyone.